We artists quickly learn to identify values on the grayscale. Then we train ourselves to think in value as we're painting nature. I'm capturing a few whites with the first wash of light gray. Now I'm painting the far mountain range and foreground rocks in light middle value gray. Next I find the far tree line and rocks with middle value. Now I'm introducing middle darks in the near trees and rocks. The darks are introduced next to the lights, with the darkest dark next to the lightest light, at the center of attention. Once we graduate to using color, reading values correctly becomes more challenging. We must combine color and value together in our thinking. First realize all colors are values. Is the stop sign middle value or red? It's not either or, it's both. Watercolorist Rex Brandt once challenged his class, can you paint in color but think in value? Here, I'm not painting the sky light, I'm painting the sky light valued pinks, yellows, and grays. Now I'm painting the far mountain range and foreground light middle value blues, violets, and gray greens. The far shore trees are painted middle value blues and violets. The close trees and foreground are painted middle dark greens, violets, and reds. The painting is completed by adding dark valued greens, blues, and violets. Before I pick up the brush, I ask myself what are the most important objects or areas they will be saved as white paper. I wet down the rest of the page and paint all other areas down the value scale somewhere in the lights using colors and grays. Once dry, I deliver a range of middle values so the objects begin to appear and then dry again. Now I introduce a variety of darker values where they will emphasize the saved whites. I call this the normal watercolor approach. I would venture to say that painting down the value scale from light through middle value to dark is how 70 to 80 percent of successful watercolors are painted. Quickly, we learn to identify value correctly. The bigger challenge is to be able to recognize value problems in a scene and then adjust values to solve the problem in a painting. This is perhaps the biggest challenge in painting. We use nature when nature gets values right. We alter values when nature confuses. This is the essence of painting. These water lilies and pads are easily recognizable as light, middle, and dark value. But though the lilies are beautiful in and of themselves, they are not arranged. The first step in every painting is to take a few minutes to search for a pleasing arrangement of the subject on the page. Now I'm wetting down the page except for the saved whites of the lilies. I begin with mixed earthy greens, 
that are twos and threes on the value scale. I've learned over the years that I tend to misread the value of the first wash, thinking I'm painting darker than I'm actually painting. There are a couple of logical reasons for this. First, no matter what colors are used, I'm instantly comparing these colors to white paper. And what happens when you compare any color to white? It looks darker. Secondly, what happens when watercolor dries? It lightens. Once I have a variety of greens established, I'm applying three balanced touches of the complement to green, a warm red. We discussed this concept in the lesson on harmony and contrast. Because I want the lily pads and water to be soft edged and out of focus in some areas, I'm not stopping to dry off the page, but jump right into the middle value range. on the flower heads. Painting down the value scale, capturing the whites with light colors, then introducing a range of middle value colors, and finally placing dark colors in, on, and around the center of attention is, I believe, how 70 to 80% of successful watercolors are painted. 